Hi, I'm Julianne Martin with Above the Fold, and this session we'll be walking through your B2B customer journey and how you can utilize programmatic advertising and marketing automation to help with that flow from upper funnel to lead. Little about me, I am a partner and CMO at Above the Fold, and I've worked in programmatic advertising specifically for the past eight years. I spent six years at Rakuten Advertising, and I have worked in all aspects of digital marketing and, and paid ads advertising, um, website design, email over the last 10 years before my time in programmatic. And I love knowing all the strengths of these different channels and how we, I can utilize them if it's something I can service now or I can refer that out, but knowing how it will all work along the journey and how it can impact a client at different stages. I have my master's of international business from the University of Denver, and I have two kids and we love outdoors of Utah. We've been skiing so much this winter and I definitely can't wait to start traveling again. I've traveled extensively and just need to get back at it. So here's my contact information and I'd love to hear from anyone with any questions after this uh, session. Just a quick overview of Above the Fold. You might know one of my business partners, Jessica Chase or Josh Aston. And we're very passionate about helping our clients expand their advertising scale and still having access to all the targeting and insights that they need. They don't have to sacrifice that as we work on the open web and have a lot of capabilities available to us that are kind of getting diminished on other platforms. As long as you know who your customer is, we can help you reach those customers with targeted messages and help you fill your funnel and grow your business. We're very fo focused on performance. We love analytics and attribution, and we help our clients make sense of that. We really wanna work with transparency and not only understand the complex work of programmatic media, but really understand how it's all driving towards their individual business goal. So first let's delve into programmatic a little bit more. So what is programmatic advertising? Well, it is the software automation that buys and sells digital ad space. So it is all done in real time with AI and machine learning to help make decisions for the advertiser. What we do help is and help our advertisers do is set their bids. So we work with their budget, their goals to determine their bids. That goes to a demand side platform, which connects with an ad exchange. And the ad exchange speaks to the supply side platform. So all the publishers on the internet are part of a supply side platform and ad exchange and demand side is the advertiser side. So each side is speaking to each other in real time. It's kind of like the stock market if you think about buying and selling. And all you have to do is lay out your detailed targeting requirements. And then we work on setting up the campaigns with the right creatives, the right advertising, the targeting um, capabilities, the restrictions we wanna set, and then it it all happens in real time. So if you imagine a giant forum where digital publishers display the ad space they have available to sell and companies that want to purchase ad spots can bid for the best opportunities. So that's what's going on in microseconds every minute of the day is this buying and selling across the digital ad space. So like any business, buying and selling online ads is based on supply and demand. So publishers have a supply of ad space and traffic while the needs of advertisers determine the demand. So there's AI software that helps to simplify the supply and demand balance across all of these platforms. So with programmatic media buying, the efficiency and automation is at its full scale. And not only is it able to uh, serve display ads, I think a lot of people think about programmatic and display, but it actually has the ability to buy media across many different types of ad inventory. So it includes display, which is the most well-known, that's what a lot of people use Google Display for. Um, native advertising is great for it to offer in interesting, educational, entertaining stories. We love you repurposing blog content here. Um, and it just takes the format of any site that it's on. So you see it leaves a lot of promoted stories, promoted articles, and it's a great way of, of repurposing a lot of your content as ads. So video is that pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll inventory, and it's on any site on the internet that has video content, and they're open on that ad exchange. So we can find your target audience and serve that video across any site, 
that's great for brand building and also when you need to kind of explain deeper pieces of your product mix. We also love those for like customer testimonials, etc. So in-app is there's a lot of mobile inventory, there's apps and games and programmatic accesses all of that as well. So a lot of people don't know that programmatic advertising, you're able to also bid on streaming audio and podcast inventory. And those are great when you want to speak to quality audience in the screen free moments where they are. Um, we can do some really great curated um, media plans across audio and podcasts as well. And then connected TV is probably the fastest growing channel right now. There's a lot of um, streaming channels like Netflix, Disney Plus um, that are adding on ad level formats. And with connected TV, it's this very this the same type of targeting that you would do to, to, to display, but you can reach users in their homes and you can also retarget them after they view that. So there's a lot more capabilities with connected TV now than if you compare to linear TV in that it really is another digital ad format. And so you get a lot of the same insights and a lot of the, the same targeting methodologies. So let's delve now into that B2B user persona. So what you wanna do first with any type of advertising, specifically with B2B, is you wanna first define your audience. So B2B is a whole different beast than other verticals. You have a very specific audience that you can utilize your product or service. So once you understand the criteria of your audience, we can move to the next step of understanding the journey. And I wanted to show this screenshot, which is from signals.ai, which we utilize. And uh, they allow you to put together this customer profile and they can find data points of users that visit your site or engage with your content on the site. And it's similar to building out this type of profile, but being able to actually serve advertising at that granular level across all those ad formats is really where programmatic shines. I'll go more into the types of targeting that we can do, but it spans location, demographic, the stage in the buyer's journey, also psychographics and more behaviors and preferences, as well as firmographics. So going away from the actual customer and their person, but to the firm that they work for. So now we go past the funnel and more of the actual user journey. So we've defined the users and in that journey, there's a lot to consider. And there's every step of the journey is very important. Um, awareness stage is where your target audience is just identifying that they have a problem. They have no idea if there's a solution for it, but they need to do something. It could be they think they just need to improve a process or make a hire. They don't know that there's a solution that your company offers yet. But then at consideration, they want to lo start looking for what's out there to solve their problem. What exactly do they need the purchase to do? So they're building their requirements, they're laying out the solutions they want to explore and considering that. So with intent, they've done that type of research and starting to select suppliers. Now we all know the B2B customer journey is very unique, that it could span many months, if not longer than that. And so the awareness and consideration phases are often forgotten in the B2B advertising space because one, it's really hard to connect an awareness that might have happened several months ago with that ultimate conversion at the bottom of the funnel. And also with consideration is having the content that can really get out there and connect with people and educate them before they're really ready to make a decision. But what we find is that this investment in awareness and consideration can really accelerate the, the brand identity that people have with a certain company. And even if they end up comparing different products and services, because they were introduced to you first and you provided very vital information to help them with that consideration and intent stages, that the likelihood of them converting with you is much higher. If you've been able to keep on that relationship building and winning their hearts and minds along this funnel. So it's very important that every step matters. You can't skip one to get to the other. So along the B2B buying journey, it's really important to serve the right digital ads to the right audiences to help influence this complex buying journey. 
And so when we look at the different stages of problem identification down to purchase decision, I just laid out a few of the types of content and advertising campaigns that work really well here. And of course, content is key, you know, having information on your site um, that you might be building out for SEO or content is great to repurpose for advertising to help with a certain intent based strategies that you might have. And having information along this whole way is really important for this buying journey. Like very often I see um, advertisers that that want to start driving leads, but they really only have a lead form or a book and appointment. And so they don't have anything for the people to do earlier in that process. They don't have any way to connect with them, any resources to add. I mean, they might have articles on their blog, but they're not in a way that can easily find them. So also just looking at all of these journeys and making sure you have collateral that can speak to the needs of the customers along the way is really important. Now that we've talked through that B2B user journey, let's talk about the programmatic channels and the media mix. So as I noted before, there are many type of ad channels at your disposal with programmatic. So at Above the Fold, we help you access an omni-channel approach across all of these channels. And each has, I kind of see them as they have, they're a different workhorse. They all have a different way to deploy to help reach different KPIs. So connected TV and audio are a bit more passive with how users experience them. But from there, you can retarget that audience that's exposed to those upper funnel channels with more of a mid-funnel tactic like pre-roll video. You can take the messaging that you were sharing at that upper funnel and keep refining it, maybe go into more detail on certain points with another type of ad format. And then from there, you can retarget further, perhaps with display ads, depending on how engaged they are with the advertising campaign. And like I mentioned before, I love native as a way to diversify the content from more of an advertising focus to more of an educational focus. Uh, so it's a great way to utilize your site content and white papers as ads. Um, you know, users may come to your site and download a certain white paper or show interest in a certain solution that you offer. So we love dynamic retargeting where you can focus a certain message on a user based on how they were interacting and what they were showing interest in. So now we've gone through some of the programmatic um, advertising formats. Now let's go into the targeting, which is a really exciting part of the programmatic. So programmatic targeting solutions are able to accomplish highly localized planning, execution, and attribution across devices. So we're able to build a media plan based on targeting across location, demographics, and behaviors, and there's many different targeting uh, capabilities that can be curated around here. So with location, this is a lot of geofencing going down to very specific uh, geographies. Demographic is the address city state zip of your target audience and being able to target at a household level or a commercial address level. And then with behavior, it's the actions that people are taking when they're in those uh, consideration and awareness phases and starting to do research. And so being able to identify those actions that they're, they might be taking before they're actually visiting your site or searching for products and looking at competitors but starting that research phase where you can get in front of them earlier. This also includes site retargeting, so being able to nurture people that do come to your site, but also being able to access third-party data segments. Um, we can utilize segments from Epsilon, Dun & Bradstreet, NetWise, etc., that are available through the DSP and utilize that for targeting. And we can also utilize your first-party data, so it's great if you are creating your own first party data, getting information for prospects and your current customers, and then utilizing um, demand side platforms to reach them across all of these ad formats. So now we'll go into some examples of different ways that we can utilize this in campaigns. One example of targeting by location is geofencing. So this is really exciting for B2B because you're able to perhaps identify either like a trade show or event where your target audience is all congregating at, or you could even um, geofence your exact, the exact building of one of your target accounts. So 
We actually had someone that wanted to geofence the Adobe headquarters here locally. And so anyone that is going in and out of that location, you can say you want them to be frequent visitors. Uh, you can start serving ads to users on that and laying on demographics. So it's really exciting the, the amount of like creativity we can do with geofencing. But one, one main way we use it is with trade shows. So let's say your, your industry or one of your target industries say it's like human resources. I know there's a big um, event in Vegas in I think April. There's thousands of people in HR going to be there. So we could geofence the area of the casino, just the event center, not the whole casino. We can actually draw a perimeter with using the satellite imagery of the building and only the area that you're interested in. So all people have to do is enter that geofence with any location data on their phone, like their maps on, any app um, tracking location. And as long as they enter the area, they're entered into the audience. So we can serve ads either during the event, but also we can serve ads up to 30 days after. So often it's hard to meet everyone in an event. And this is a great way of of, of getting in front of them over time, nurturing them with your messaging, and ideally try to get them onto your site so that you can give them some resources, chat with them, try to you know book a demo and things from there. But you have a little bit more time than converting just during the show. So once they enter the audience, they start seeing the ads on their mobile phone initially. And then as we use that probabilistic and deterministic data, we can connect that user to other devices in their home, including their streaming TV, their desktop, and tablets. When targeting by demographic, there is an immense amount of data that we have access to with programmatic. We can curate this and build a media plan to exact persona. So if you're laying out your ideal company to work with has a certain number of employees that they are over a certain amount in sales revenue, say over 200,000, but under 500,000, those are available as well. How many years in business? We can go into if they are you have any business loans, if they have a lease credit, um, and the net worth of the company, and then also going into the individual roles of the titles. Say you only want the CEO of the company, or you only want someone that is in accounting at the company. There's a lot of curation that we can build around that. We can also go into job titles for blue collar workers, if it's management, a coordinator, accountant, things like that. White um, with blue collar workers, we can you know, they're a contractor, they work in construction, they're a truck driver, etc. So a lot of this capabilities might only be found on LinkedIn currently, but we're able to take this and find those users across all of the all of the different devices across the full web, you know, serving onto TV. So it's really exciting what we can do with demographic data to really curate to only your ideal customer persona. So lastly, we have an example of a programmatic campaign targeting by behavior. So if we think about a user journey, let's say for lawn care, just to simplify it. When they first start looking, let's say they just bought a house, they moved out of the city, now they have a yard. So they just want to look for lawn care tips, right? This is where you probably aren't going to be advertising as a business. This is where they get a lot of content, they read articles, they watch videos, and they're just getting general information as they learn a little bit more. And so th through that phase, they start visiting sites and they start looking at content that's very related to that vertical. So they'll start learning about products. They'll start learning about options and types of trees they can get and types of plants that work for their area. They become more and more educated. And these user intent signals, both on the initial phase of just starting research and then as they are engaging with these publishers, it gives a lot of signal that a company that could get in front of them can have that opportunity. So, but often they wait until it's kind of at that phase, like now they know they need sod installation. So they go to Google and look for sod installation in their city. And that's where they start seeing all the ads. But before they get to that point, they've gone through all these phases before that um, of learning about the information. And the companies that were likely showing up earlier in the process, 
they have that name recognition now. So when they start seeing advertisements for different companies, the one that they've seen before that gave them that great article, that gave them that information, is going to stand out a lot more. So with um, keyword level retargeting, we can look at that context and how they're engaging with sites off of Google. Any site with a search box on the internet can be part of keyword level retargeting. So we can take the keywords that you might be targeting in paid search or with SEO, but they might also be a little uh, more broad and not really worth um, bidding on in CPC yet. But it would make sense because they show potential intent and it's pretty inexpensive to get in front of them with some advertisements at this stage. So we can serve ads to consumers based on the keywords that they've entered into a website or a search engine search query. It includes Google, but every other site on the internet with the search box. And we can also layer on, okay, we want if they search this phrase within the last month or within the last five minutes, their advertisements could start being triggered. And, you, and then when they leave that site, start reading a blog, they start watching the news, they'd start seeing your advertisements ongoing from there and you can start nurturing them with different ad formats. So in closing, I've gone through how programmatic advertising helps nurture your B2B customer journey, being able to have touch points along the way with different types of ad formats and targeting options. But all of this drives users to your website. That's the hub. That's where they're going to be taking action, being able to contact you, engage with you, um, download those content features, those lead nurture um, features, etc. And it's the marketing automation that you integrate on your site is going to accelerate that so much more. You know, not everybody that you're going to serve an ad to is going to be ready to download a lead form or sorry, uh, fill out a lead form or book a meeting with you. But um, like we utilize signals AI, and it's great because anyone that comes to our site is able to identify users within target industries that we're interested in before they ever engage with us. So they could engage with our chat bot, and we've curated that to be different for different industries. Um, we get alerted if somebody is on the chat, and we can jump in and have a one on one conversation with them. Um, but what I love about it is because programmatic drives so much great new traffic, they're often their first touch point, uh, being able to close the gap between getting a lead and just having an idea of what businesses are visiting your site um, earlier on so that you can perhaps curate some information for that type of industry, reach out to them if you have a relationship there and more. So I definitely recommend Signals as a, a one of the tools in your marketing automation toolkit just to help you get more information on those website visitors that are being driven from your awareness campaigns. So thank you so much for your time. And again, I'd love to hear from many of you with any additional questions and feedback. And you can reach me at julianne at getabovethefold.com. Thank you so much.